So nothing important again this week for a Tuesday stream, but we do have some card of the days for ride lines. Not the boss unit itself, which I really wish they didn't do that and just reveal it all in a stream, but also the last cards revealed for Clan Collection 3 and 4, along with the reprints. So let's begin. So let's start off with cards for Wooden Sword Ryu. And keep in mind, none of these ride lines have their boss unit revealed yet. So we start off with It's Time to Do It Wooden Sword Ryu, Grade 1, AK Power and Skills. Auto, when placed on Vanguard by riding on top of the Grade 0 Wooden Sword Ryu, look at top 5 cards of your deck, choose a searching for the best place or real friends from among them, and add it to your hand. And of course, shuffle your deck. So it's a typical Grade 1 ride line starter where it just helps you set things up. My only gripe is that it's a grade 1 ride line card that looks at the top 5 cards of your deck to search for one of your key pieces, when a majority of the grade 1 ride line lineups for many archetypes lets you search throughout your whole deck. Next, becoming a true man, Wooden Sword Ryu. Grade 2, Tanky Power and Skillless. Auto Vanguard, costs Soul Blast, a Wooden Sword Ryu. Search your deck for one Ryu's friends and call it to rear guard. And spoiler, it would seem that reused friends is basically main deck tokens. Because you're going to be allowed to run more than a play set in a deck. But anyway, second skill, count rearguard during your turn plus 2k power. Typical ride line grade 2. No grade 3 yet, so to the support card, the first one being a double rare, head of bandits, Tokagato. Grade 1, 8 power, it has a crit of 0 for being an oversoul card, or spirit. And it's skillless. Act rearguard cost count last one, and to the end of the turn, this card can attack your opponent's back row from the back row. Not bad. Most back row units are going to be AK anyway, so this being able to sneak up from behind is very nice, and it doesn't need to be in the front row to do so, which of course makes it hard to remove in normal means. But it also has a second skill where count rearguard during your turn. If you have a searching for the best place in your order zone, all your eternal traveler wooden sword reuse on your vanguard just was 5k, and this is also treated as reused friends. Obvious must play for the Ryu deck, for one being his spirit so you have to play it by default, but being able to count as a Ryu's friend and also giving some extra power, that helps out a lot. Even though we don't know that yet, it's pretty obvious. And then we go to Ryu's friends which are great ones with 7k power and you can run 9 of these in a deck. Like I said, these are kind of like main deck tokens. They also have a unique skill where count rearguard. During the battle that your wooden sword Ryu or Ryu's friends is attacked, this can intercept. Since this is a grade 1, it would have been nice if this could intercept from the back row. Although you are going to be calling a bunch of Ryu's friends, so it's very likely that you will have the two copies in the front row as well. And then to searching for the best place which is a grade 1 set order, and you play it if you have a wooden sword Ryu on the field. That's your ride line, you're obviously going to have it, and you can search this with the grade 1. And its skill is, count order zone. Ryu's friends on your rear guards cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects, and cannot be retired by your opponent's card effects. That is very good protection. Not only will we get that for an Orphis deck, but to the second skill, auto order zone. When you play another searching for the best place, you put this one to soul, and then choose one of your wooden sword reuse on your vanguard, and it gets plus one crit into the end turn. I mean, there's no reason to stack this in the first place, so it's very nice that you could cycle that one to your soul and also give your vanguard a crit, which can be very helpful. And I'm pretty sure your grade 3 sword Ryu is probably going to get a lot of power based on your Ryu's friends. So in combination together, it can be nasty, but we'll still have to wait and see. Now on to Ren Tao. We start off with hatred towards the Tao family, Ren Tao, which is a grade 1 way to balance skills. Auto when placed on Vanguard by riding on top of the Ren Tao, search your deck for one warlord serving the Tao family, Basin, and call it to the back row center rear guard. And of course, shuffle your deck. You see what I mean? Direct searching for your grade 1 ride line. And in this case, you directly call your spirit. And then we go to Faded Battle Ren Tao. Grade 2, Tank Power and Skills. Auto Vanguard. When this unit attack hits while being boosted by Bison, draw a card. Attack hit with a boost just to draw. That's pretty weak. Although your grade 1 guarantees the Bison behind this and it will be 8k boost, so it will be 18k. So, will be doable, but that's pretty weak payoff. Second skill, count rearguard during your turn, this card gets was 2k, typical ride line. And then to his support cards, first is a double rare, 
warlord serving the Tao family basin, which is grade 1 with AK power, it's a spirit so of course they are crit, and it's skillless. Auto drop zone, when your grade 3 Ren Tao is placed on vanguard, if you have no units with basin's card name, you may call this to rearguard, if you have two of them, you can only call one, because of course you trigger the skill one at a time. This is a very nice spirit, because if your opponent plays a control deck, it can be quite troublesome with some of the decks. So this being able to always revive itself, guaranteeing your spirit, really helps out your main vanguard because your main vanguard really needs the spirit on the field. Which of course in the long run is also very nice because you could run less copies of these. And then we got a rare, Super Hadoraki, which is a grade 3 normal order. And you play it if you have a Ren Tao. You choose a basin from your soul and call it to rearguard. And then it gets plus 10k and 1 crit. So basically allows your basin to be attacker. Why not? And then if your vanguard is Ren Tao and it's an oversoul this turn, choose one of your opponent's rearguards and retire it. If oversoul is putting your very specific rearguard to your soul, I do see this being played because yeah, you're gonna need the basin. And the basin is always reusable because even if it gets retired, well it just comes back. So it is a nice tech choice, especially for attacker. And now to Faust the Eight. We start with Incomparable Feelings Faust the Eight. Grade 1 8 power and skills. Auto when rolled upon by Faust the Eight, put the top five cards of your deck to your drop zone. Then choose one card with Essa in its card name from your drop zone and add it to your hand. Million will be important in this deck, so that mill itself is a plus already. And being able to add your spirit is a bonus. And then we go to Inherited Madness Faust the Eight. Grade 2 Tank Power and Skills. Auto when rolled upon by your Grade 1 Faust the Eight. Costs Counter Blast 1. Put 5 cards from the top of the deck into your drop zone. Add all the Necromancy cards from your drop zone to your hand. You know, with all this milling, you may think that we're actually resurrecting cards from the drop zone and based on the card Necromancy, but actually, you're raising the undead, which are all tokens. But who knows, maybe your main grade 3 can resurrect stuff from the drop zone. And into the support card being a double rare, which of course will be his spirit, Beloved Wife Elisa. Grade 1, 8 power and skills. Count Rearguard. If your vanguard is Faust the 8, and it's an oversoul this turn, this card gives us 10k power and 1 crit. 18k beater. Why not? Second skill. Auto Rearguard. At the end of the battle, this card attack. Cost, count bus 1, retire 3 Bone Soldier tokens and stand this unit. So it's very similar to the new grade 2 that is for Orphis. Except this one needs a counter blast. Yeah, why not? And then just because the Bone Soldier tokens are all grade zeros with 5k power. And of course we finally go to Necromancy which is a grade 1 set order. And you play it if you have Faust the 8 on the field of course. And it's skillless. Auto, when put to your order zone, look at the top 2 cards in your deck. Choose one Elisa from among them and add it to your hand. Discard the rest. And in the second skill, Act Order Zone. If your Vanguard is Faust the Eight, cost buying three cards from your drop zone, call the same number of Bone Soldier tokens up to the number of Necromancies in your order zone to the rear guard. This is why you want to set up your drop zone. It's because the more cards in your drop zone, you can put more Bone Soldier tokens on the field. I think it's just more effective to just resurrect cards from the drop zone than use your drop zone for tokens, but it is a neat idea. But who knows, our main grade 3 might have the ability to resurrect some stuff from our drop zone considering with all that mill, and maybe some recycle as well. And hopefully, because we're milling a lot, we have ways to put those bind zone cards back to our deck so we don't deck out. But overall, the Faust one is the most interesting so far. And then here's the remaining clan collection stuff. It's kind of what I expected. The only one I really did not expect too much, even though I kind of predicted it, was Magatsu Storm Reverse. Mainly because Magatsu Storm was originally Morokumo, but was remade Nubatama for V, and we did had Kamijiki Kongo during the Link Joker era, although that was in the middle of the Link Joker era where Nubatama was finally playable. So I'm a little surprised they didn't choose that one to be a reverse unit. But hey, we got more support for Magatsu. Everything else is what I expected. And then here are the reprints for Clan Collection 3 and 4. And honestly, I'm not really too crazy about them. Some of them are fine, 
Promo reprints are always fine with me because promos are a little difficult to get, so those are understandable why they're re getting reprinted. But for the most part, most of these reprints are nothing crazy. And now for the Tuesday stream. I'm just gonna say this right now, there was nothing too special about today's stream. But we did get this reveal where we are getting more support for the set 3 ride lines. And it's kind of expected because, well, the first set that introduces the ride line normally just, well, introduces them where it's like pretty weak. And then the next set introduces the good cards that makes the deck super playable. Although I am curious, are we going to get any more support for the second wave of ride lines? Mainly Zorga and Orphis as they actually are played by main characters of the anime. So that's it for this stream, nothing much, just a bunch of card of the days with ride lines, but no great 3 reveals and for some reason they decided to not introduce the whole ride line in a stream. Because doing these by card of the days really feel a little awkward. Although we can't do anything about their decision making, I could only say some of them are interesting so far. But on that, have a nice day.